Good morning and welcome back to the homestead. Came out to check on the garden today and found a problem. Cutworms, not fun. So in a previous videos, I said that gardening in here in the late summer, early fall in the South is very tough because we're fighting a couple different elements and pests being one of them. And there is probably not a more aggravating pest in the garden than a cutworm, in my opinion. You know, they don't come along and eat the plant. They don't bore into the fruit. Uh, they don't steal your fruit. They don't chew on the leaves. They literally just come in, cut the plant off at surface level or just below the surface level and move on to the next one. This is the sixth or seventh plant in a week that I have found and I, I tried coming out here and uh, lay some stuff down, but we're getting so much rain here that it's virtually pointless. Um, anything that I put on it washes away, you know, within hours. Uh, last night I came out here about one o'clock in the morning and found another one, tried and, trying to catch them in the act so I can pick them off and mechanically, you know, kill them by pulling them off and squishing them. Uh, I looked at the forecast and we're not supposed to get any rain for the next day. So let me show you what I did. So first I came out with some spinosad spray and I sprayed the ground around the base of the plant, the stem of the plant and the leaves of the plant and let that dry a little bit. And then I come back and I started piling up diatomaceous earth around it and, uh, Diatomaceous earth does work for worms. It doesn't kill them right away. It doesn't kill them as fast as spinosad does, uh, but it'll kill them in a day or two. What it does is it's uh, just tiny shards um, of crustaceans. And when they crawl over or drag their bodies over it, it cuts them. Basically they die of a thousand cuts and uh, they'll get scratches all on them and they'll die of dehydration. Uh, in a nutshell, that's what diatomaceous earth does. So. I gotta come back in and spread that out a little bit. I just piled it up because like I said, it was it was after one o'clock in the morning that I came out here after work and was, was messing around with these in the flashlight. I gotta come back, do a little bit more work in the mor this morning. But yeah, this is this is the result of cutworms. Let me show you the stem of that. They literally just come in and cut it at the base and move on. All right, so we've replaced at least six or seven of these guys. Um, some have grown, you can see the size difference here, you know, that's a replacement versus, you know, those tall guys down there. Um, we'll keep at it. We have not lost the war, but, uh, we are taking a beating. <laughs> We're not giving up gardening. You know, gar this is what gardening is about. You have to fight elements. You have to fight pests. You have to fight, you know, mother nature is is a beast we'll keep at it i wanted to do a quick little comparison to the two different squashes that we we picked out uh the first one was slick pick it was a hoss seed and the other one was a straight straight neck summer squash i believe it was a burpee seed we picked up at home depot um right right out of the gate in the starter seeds uh, you could tell the slick pick was just a more vigorous, vibrant, uh, just a stronger uh, start right right from the right from the start. It was, <clears throat> and then the straight neck squash picked up speed and caught up to it. And same thing happened when we potted these. The slick pick, you know, came right up, started growing really strong and fast, and the straight neck Home Depot squash. Burpee seed was lagging behind, but now you can see they are very even. I would dare say the straight neck squash is even a little bit bigger and maybe even looks a tad bit better. But let's come on inside here and look at the Haas slick pick squash. Flowers galore. I mean, we've got squash that you know it probably three inches tall you can see next to my hand here they're they're getting this one's got, got four or five different squash on it 
This one back here, low to a flower, so it has a squash on it. And now let's look at the at this one. No squash yet. It is starting to pop with some flowers, but it is lagging behind. Um, definitely in time, but uh, you know, and plant vigor, it is uh, it's right there with the slick pick, if not better. So I just want to do a little side by side comparison so far um in the uh in this grow out that's what we have all right y'all that's it for this quick little video i just wanted to, to try to do something different other than a longer form video like eight nine ten minutes um wanted to try these three or four minute videos to see how they work uh just to maybe put out a little a little bit more videos than uh normal um, we just don't have time to edit the longer videos and we have so much going on here um i think little smaller clips like this will be a little bit easier for me and we get to put a little bit more content out um it is august 26th here today and uh i think i'm gonna start some fall seed seedlings in the in the seed trays it's a little bit earlier than i would really like to do seed starts um i would like to wait till at least the first week of september but Almost every other morning when I come out and I walk around and look at the garden, I can feel fall in the air. Uh, the humidity just isn't there anymore and it, it start, it's starting to feel a little cooler in the morning. So I know I have a gut feeling that fall is gonna come a little bit earlier, earlier this year. So I'm gonna go ahead and start some fall seedlings and uh, hopefully I'll bring you a video of that, of what we're gonna grow and um, you guys can see what we are starting. So until then, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on the Kyle Family Homestead. Y'all have a good day.